Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be sharing my updated thoughts on some recent products. I've done my best to keep you up to speed since I'm filming more regularly, but this will just be a nice way to sit down and put everything in one place. It'll be far more convenient for all of you guys. Most everything here I've picked up over the last couple weeks, couple months. I only have one thing I think I picked up in December, but most everything is pretty new. And I'm going to begin with Sunless Tanner. Here I have the Saint Tropez Extra Dark. I picked this up during the Sephora sale. And then I also have this Australian Glow, the Dark One Hour Express. This was sent to me complimentary in a big and a random PR box. I've tried both of these. The Saint Tropez Extra Dark was a little bit of a letdown and I hate to say it because I have sworn by Saint Tropez. So I thought this would be amazing because it's the extra dark. Usually I have to do two coats to get as dark as I wanna be or apply it two nights in a row. And I thought this would maybe consolidate to just one night. It goes on so strange. The mousse, I'm afraid to even pump it down on my hand, but it looks just army green. It's really thick and opaque and almost like a creamier foam. Definitely the strangest sunless tanner I've ever applied. It just looked really funny. I didn't know what to expect. I was kind of nervous, excited, like, ooh, this is gonna make me so dark. I pictured it going horribly wrong because I thought I was gonna wake up the next morning and be way too dark, but I wasn't. I rinsed it off, you know, took my shower in the morning and I felt like I wasn't any darker than the original Express Mousse. And I would have needed to go back with two coats. So it's not that it's a bad sunless stainer, I'll definitely use it, but I think I just prefer the regular Express. I wanna say this is more expensive and it didn't make me any darker. It's not as bad as I thought. The Express Mousse is $44 and then the Extra Dark is $45. So it's a dollar difference. I just looked it up on the Sephora app. Not a big deal. I'm still a little bit disappointed simply because my expectations were so high. I thought it was going to be just so overwhelmingly dark, you know, just an obvious difference. I was kind of looking at my skin like, is it darker? Is the tone that different? Every little dollar counts, so save your dollar and just go with the Express Mousse. Now this Australian Glow, this impressed me. And this is the dark version, One Hour Express. I applied it the same way I apply any of my sunless tanners at night, cover myself in a giant robe so I don't smear it all over the sheets, and then I rinse it off the next morning. It smells like coconut. When this arrived, I was reading all about it and it said no scent, and I kind of thought to myself, okay, sure, we'll see. It doesn't have a scent. It smells a little bit like coconut, but that's it. It's supposed to be enriched with organic ingredients, scent and streak free, it came with the mitt, fast drying, no orange tones, Australian made. I love it. This is the tanner that I'm currently wearing. I applied this Friday evening. It's now Monday morning. It's faded a little bit, but it still looks really even, not patchy at all. And when I applied this, it was so dark. I thought it was gonna take me even darker than the extra dark. And it, it didn't, you know, I still could have done two coats if I wanted to. I didn't, I just did the one coat and I'm really happy with the color. I just loved everything about it. The smell, the way it went on, it was so easy to see because it was so dark. I love the way that it's fading. And I think the color is really nice. It's kind of that perfect bronze. It looks like a natural tan, but it's gonna match your foundation. I'd love to create a sunless tanner roundup style video where I show you my application process tips, the shade differences and undertones of each of these. Maybe compare some of the higher end tanners to what's available at the drugstore. I think that would be really interesting to see the difference, but I wanna make sure I include all of the brands that you guys would like to see. So let me know down below. You can see I messed up my elbow and my hand and my feet. I'm not gonna show you my feet. Hands and feet are always the worst. Usually I do okay on the elbows, but not this time around. Next, I wanna talk about all of the hair masks that I picked up during the Sephora sale. I've now had an opportunity to try all three. I've only used them once, but I feel like I have a really good sense of what each of them are going to do for my hair. My favorite is hands down this Kerastase. Discipline Mask Oleo Relax. It's the orange. It's amazing. This made such a difference with my hair, I could tell. Even when it was still wet, before I'd even styled it, it just felt so soft, 
so hydrated, so manageable. It felt the way hair feels before you bleach it, color treat it, just abuse it with heat. I didn't even leave it on the full five to seven minutes. It was probably closer to three or four minutes, but still a huge difference. And then once I had styled the hair, it felt so soft. Even after I had gone in with my wand and I did curls, it still felt really soft and just unfazed by any of the heat, the blow dryer, nothing. So I know that this is going to do wonders for my hair the more I use it. I did wanna put these others to the test. So I went in next with this Kiehl's Sunflower Color Preserving Deep Recovery Pack. This is $25, this was $62.63, and of course I picked it up on sale, so I saved 15%. I really like this mask. It's incredibly hydrating. It smells incredible. Even hours after I had styled it, I could still smell the apricot oils. I could feel a difference, not nearly as much of a difference as this. This is more of a deep, kind of rich conditioner. If you've ever had one of those thick, rich conditioners when you kind of left it on for a few extra minutes, that's kind of how this leaves your hair. Yes, it's softer, it smells really nice, it's more manageable probably amazing over time, but if you have extremely damaged hair, you're better off going with Kerastase. This is going to be the mask for anybody with color treated, heat damaged, dry, brittle, extremely damaged hair. When nothing else will work for you, this is going to be an incredible mask. Now the third mask I just tried today, this is the Verb Tone and Bright and Hydrate Purple Mask. It definitely tones, I don't think it's incredibly hydrating. I couldn't feel any difference with my hair. The other two, I could tell. You know, you can feel the difference. With this, I could tell the color. You know, I could visually see that the purple had done its thing. I just feel like I need to make sure that I go in with something incredibly hydrating the next time around. I do think this is gonna be a great product for anybody who doesn't use a purple shampoo or purple conditioner. If you just wanna use your regular shampoo condition, you just want a little toning with your mask, this would probably be fine for you. It's just not going to give you, you know, extreme repair. I also tried this Violet Crush for Blondes. This is from John Frieda. This was sent to me in the PR box. So this is the purple shampoo and conditioner. I used both. I have the Pravana in my shower. I used the Oribe. I'm impressed with these considering the price point is so much lower. I didn't find them to be drying. That's usually my one complaint when it comes to purple shampoo is that it leaves my hair feeling really parched. The other thing about this shampoo is it actually lathers like a real shampoo. The other purple shampoo that I use, I generally have to go in once with a different shampoo, scrubby, 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 really get my scalp because I generally only wash my hair twice a week. So by the time I wash it, it really needs to be washed. So I'll go in shampoo, rinse it out, and then I go in with the purple shampoo and I kind of work it definitely up here because this is my trouble area and then I run it all the way through the bottom, leave it on for maybe a minute and then I rinse it out. But it doesn't really give a good lather. Like I couldn't use that shampoo to clean the hair. That's just a tone. Whereas this, I feel like you could use this as your normal shampoo if you wanted to. Um, but I really liked it. I used these when I went in with this. I think this is an award-winning combination for anybody who doesn't want to spend a ton of money on hair care products. Now, if you're color treating your hair, you're probably spending hundreds of dollars at the salon and depending on how often you have to go, that definitely adds up. So if you're gonna spend hundreds of dollars at the salon, you wanna make sure that you invest in good products to use at home. But if you don't wanna spend you know, $60 on a hair mask that is pretty pricey, you could get this for $25. And I think these are probably less than $10 each, I would imagine. It's a more affordable option. It's really easy to get your hands on. I think they carry John Frieda just about everywhere. I think you can get this at the convenience store, but you can definitely get it at the grocery store, Target, places like that. I always see these. And then this could be your intense hydration if you really need both. Most people do. The rest is all makeup and I just separated everything into two piles. So I have the still love it and the somewhat disappointed. Let's talk about the biggest surprise that I've had recently. This is the Circle Delete Concealer from Jane Iredale. 
this was sent to me with a couple other things. I'd never tried the brand before. And when it comes to concealer, I just am very skeptical. I have low expectations of every concealer. I did not think that I was going to like it, let alone love it. It doesn't crease at all and it looks so natural under the eye. It has more of a medium coverage, but it also has kind of a creamy finish. So it's not really drying, it's not crepey, it's not going to accentuate fine lines. I thought it was a fluke the first time I tried it because it didn't settle and it looked really pretty. And I thought, okay, nice. I, this isn't going to work for me though, even though it looks really great this first time I'm using it. And what I found to work for me, because there's this really light brightening shade and then this deeper, maybe corrector, maybe skin tone type of shade, I mix the two together. So I just mix a little, mix a little, mix a little, and then it becomes the perfect shade right underneath the eye and it looks so beautiful. And I've only ever applied this with my fingers and I just kind of blend it out. It takes a little bit longer, you know, I feel like I'm pretty fast with the brush and it picks up excess product, but I just go in with my fingers. I give it a minute, I work it in. The coverage is fine. You know, it's not going to be super full coverage, but as long as you don't have to worry about covering really dark circles, I think you would love this. I don't hear anybody talking about it with the exception of Mandy Davis. I think she is the one person who I know uses a lot of Jane Iredale products and she always looks beautiful in them, but she looks beautiful with anything that she puts on her face. Here is one of the not so great concealers. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you know how I feel about this already, but I have been getting some questions lately and I just want to clarify. But in my initial review of this concealer, I didn't really like the texture, but I also didn't like the shade. It wasn't light enough. Somebody mentioned in the comments that you could pick this up directly from Dior in the double zero. So that's what I did. I wanted to give it a fair shot. For the price, you get a ton of product. It was such a good value. I wanted to make this work so bad. I've tried this so many times underneath the eye. It creases like crazy on me. There's no way I could go without setting it with powder, but even when I set with powder, it's just, really creasy and I don't have to wait that long. It's not like it, it looks really great for the first few hours and then later in the day it starts to crease. No, this creases on me pretty immediately. I'm gonna continue to use this to highlight my face. I just can't use it under the eye. I just wanted to put that out there if just in case anybody has missed the videos where I have destroyed this concealer to pieces. <laughs> a great point somebody brought up, and I think it was on the original video, is somebody said that they like to use this as a foundation touch-up. I couldn't do that with this double zero. Had I had ordered a darker shade, I could probably do that because it is kind of convenient. You know, the size and the price, if you're like me and you pick this up only to find that you can't use it under the eye, maybe you can use it as foundation touch-up kind of take it with you in your purse or your travel bag and that way you have something that you can use to just conceal and cover other spots on the face where you don't have to worry about creasing that much. That would be one way to use it. I have a handful of eyeliners here to talk about. I wanna begin with these Marc Jacobs. I also have the liquid version. I like it. I picked it up in magenta. I'm only gonna use it every once in a while. I paid a really good price for it, so I'm happy. No complaints there. But these are like night and day and you wouldn't think because it should be the same. I mean, they're both these gel eyeliner formulas. So the Fine Liner Ultra Skinny Gel Eye Crayon, this is amazing. It goes on so opaque, one swipe and you're done. It doesn't seem like there's a ton of product in there, but I'm really happy with it. It is so good, so smooth. This one, on the other hand, this is the highliner gel eye crayon. So what is the difference? They're both called gel eye crayon. You'd think they would both be gel eyeliners. They would both be equal. This is the ultra skinny. Here's the highliner. This one is not the same. Of course, on the hand, it applies really easily. But as soon as I go to apply it in the waterline, I struggle. It just does not stick. I'll go over and over and over. And even once I've built it up and it takes me a minute, it's still very light. Whereas with this gel crayon, I just feel like it is so opaque immediately. Just one little line, done. 
you know, I'm going to keep it and try to make it work just so it's not a waste. But of these two, I would recommend the Skinny. I'm still absolutely loving these two eyeliners from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Pillow Talk eyeliner that came out with the Pillow Talk collection. And then here I have the maroon. This is the mesmerizing maroon. There's a metallic and a matte side. I use this all the time. I'm using this today. I've used both of these. I just really like this color because it's not black, but it gives you a little something. It's generally very flattering with brown eyeshadow look. So I use these two. I also picked up the double-sided blue eyeliner. I don't really use it that much but I'll probably use it a lot more than I will use this blue eyeliner. And then I have these Chanel liquid liners. You remember these? They came out several months ago now. This one is my favorite. This is the copper. It just says 522, but this is the copper shade, which I believe is limited edition, unfortunately. I think, yes, this is the one that I'm wearing today. This is 516. It's almost a reddish brown. It's very dark. So you're not really going to tell that it's not black unless you're pretty close, but it just looks a little bit less harsh. I really like both of these. <sighs> I like these, but I don't like them as much as the original version. I thought this would be comparable to the liquid liner in the little inkwell that Chanel had previously. I think they dry up a little bit faster because I've noticed like around the edge it just gets a little bit goopy and clumpy and I think they're just starting to get a little bit dry and thick. Just beware that you need to close them tightly very fast or else they're going to dry out really quickly. This is the last item in my somewhat disappointed pile and I haven't included this on my list of 2020 luxury fails so it's not that I don't like this product but I guess if I'm doing an update, the update would be that I don't use it. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the Natasha Denona Love Glow Cheek Palette. And I am absolutely obsessed with this packaging. I was drawn in from the get-go. It was my first Natasha Denona purchase was this year. I feel like I'm exploring all these other brands. And I, I got the big palette and then I picked up this. And it was so exciting and I still really love that eyeshadow palette don't use that often either if I'm being honest. I generally pull out my Pillow Talk palette. If I want a little sparkle, a little drama, I'll pull out my Pat McGrath Labs bronze seduction palette. But I did pull it out recently and I created a look I was really happy with. So the palette is great. This palette, the cheek palette is great. It's just a lot of glitter. I just haven't had anywhere to go where I would need to use this palette. I don't wear glitter on my cheeks on a daily basis. I do think it looks really pretty though. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> it's a look, that's for sure. It's not going to be a daily hanging around the house quarantine look. Now I need to even out my cheeks. I'm hoping that I will use it, but for now, this is one of those purchases that falls under the why did I buy that again category. And it's so pretty too. But why did I buy that again? <laughs> I'm still not quite sure. Although I do really like this glitter effect. Ooh, Florida is starting to open up again. Not just Florida, South Florida, which we were on pause for the longest time, but a lot of businesses opened today. And then I saw, I got, think I got a couple emails from the local malls that they're gonna be opening later this month. So slowly but surely things are kind of getting back to normal. Let me know down in the comment section if things are starting to open up by you or if you're still in full-blown lockdown. I dream of a day when I have somewhere to go that inspires me to throw glitter all over my face. The lip combination that I'm wearing today is this Sarah Hap lip primer with this Hermes lipstick, the beige Taladect, and then the Natasha Denona lip gloss. I love this little trio and it gives me an opportunity to talk about all of these products. So I'm really happy with this lip gloss. It's so funny because when I did that Natasha Denona review, I kind of laughed myself when I applied this and I thought, ooh, this is terrible. I'm going to return it. And you know what I've gotten the most use out of? 
the lip gloss. It's really pretty. I just like to throw it on top of something else. That was the mistake I made. But on top of a lipstick, it looks really pretty. These Hermes lipsticks. I'm so happy I got my hands on these. And every once in a while, I sort of check to see if they're available again because I'd like to maybe pick up a different color. I got this one and then I picked up a red, which I probably won't wear until maybe summer summer date night. I mean, that's really the only time that I will wear red anytime soon. But I'm living in these beigey, coral, peachy tones. So I love this and they're sold out everywhere. I see them come back every once in a while, but it's generally one or two shades and then they immediately disappear. So I cannot wait until they either come out with more shades, expand their beauty range. I know they were supposed to launch a bunch of other beauty products. I have my eyes on Hermes. I'm excited about what they come out with because there was just so much detail with these lipsticks. I love the color, I love the creaminess. They remind me a lot of the Tom Ford in that they just kind of hug your lip and it feels really nourishing. They were so expensive, but I do not regret a single penny. And then the Sarah Hap Lip Primer. I really like this, but the trick is you can only use a very small amount. And I would recommend almost exfoliating your lips beforehand, then go on with a tiny bit of the lip primer, especially if you're wearing a light shade because if you apply too much, then you can almost see it underneath the lipstick. You wanna make sure that your lips are as smooth as possible, and then you go in with the lip primer. But I really like it. It just coats your lips so that the lipstick has something to grab onto. It reminds me a lot of this. This is to the face what this is to the lips, and this is the primer that I have on today. It's the Clarins Instant Smooth Perfecting Touch. I really like this primer. I only apply it Kind of around the pores. I think I applied a little bit in the t-zone and I know I did not include this in my primer video. It's really hard to narrow down to just 10. So that is my top 10. If I could expand and make it a top 15, this would probably have made it into the top 15. If you struggle with pores and you need a lot of blurring or something that's going to fill in, you know, those little cracks, crevices, little areas on the face, this is an awesome primer for that. The last two things I have here to talk about came from the Chanel Spring Collection, and I wanted to mention them because I've been wearing them again and I just truly love them. They're still available. I have on the Warm Memories eyeshadow palette and this Rising Sun Ombre Premier Lac. I feel like I haven't really talked about these since I first did my review, and to be honest, I wasn't really wearing them until lately. The past couple weeks, I've been using these again and I remember why I really like them. I struggled a bit with the purple shade. There was like a mauve purple. That one didn't go on so smooth, but I have the pale pink and then this one. This Rising Sun is beautiful. It looks very similar to that Copper Sparks liquid shadow from Dior that I love so much. Slightly less glittery, so this is kind of the more wearable version, I suppose. But I just love the texture, the consistency. It doesn't crease. It looks really beautiful. The look today was super simple. I used this shade right here in the crease, went in with this on the lid, and then I took this darker shade to add a little depth and dimension in the outer V, and that was it. Three steps, but it was really fast and simple. That's all I have for today. Hopefully if there's anything else I picked up recently, I've talked about it enough that you know where I stand. And let me know if you like this style of video. I can start to incorporate it more into my channel where every couple months, I kind of sit down and dedicate an entire video to updating you guys. And that way you'll know if my thoughts have changed or if I have any tips, tricks, funny anecdotes, anything that I can add to help you decide whether or not these products are right for you or worth your money. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I love hearing from you guys. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything on my face down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.